from a life on your own to a family of your own. From small passions to huge successes. From the saddest endings to happier beginnings. From walking her to school to walking her down the aisle. Whatever change, one thing that's constant is home. Celebrating 30 years of life moments. Avita. Hey, hey, hey! This is KJ and welcome to the latest episode of Finance Fridays. This is a weekly program where I interview entrepreneurs, personal finance personalities, and purpose-driven individuals from different parts of the world to talk about their stories, mindset, and and help to help us prosper with the purpose. Sorry, I'm really excited for tonight. And medyo kinakaban si KJ. And uh, we are streaming live on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. And this episode will also be available on my Parent Purpose podcast on Anchor, Spotify, and Apple Podcast. If you're new to my channel, please like, share, and subscribe to Parent Purpose podcast. And also on Purpose Driven Finance on Facebook, YouTube, and connect with me on LinkedIn. And of course, a huge shout out to our regular viewers out there. Hope you are staying negative from COVID and positive in life. So I just want to greet everyone who's joining in tonight because this is a very special episode. And I hope that we all take down notes because Steve is going to teach us a lot of things in terms of his unbiased investment uh, tips for expats. And even if you're not an expatriate or an overseas Filipino, you can still learn new ways of investing your money tonight tonight or today, where, wherever or which part of the world you are right now. And of course, a big shout out to Ayala Land Middle East and Go Hunter for supporting my advocacy on financial literacy. By the way, just a quick reminder for tonight's event. The opinions, thoughts, and ideas expressed in this episode do not constitute direct legal advice and is for informational purposes only. We strongly suggest that you do your own research and speak to your financial planner. Yes. Now, guys, there are two types of FIs. The first one is financial independence, and the second one is financial ignorance. And Benjamin Franklin quoted that the only thing that's more expensive than education is ignorance. Not knowing what to do with your money can cost you years to recover your losses, and such expensive mistakes can easily be prevented by simply learning the basics of proper money management and investing. So tonight, I'm beyond excited to talk to our guest because I consider him as a rock star when it comes to expat investing here in the UAE. So let me introduce him. He is the board member of simplyfi.org, the UAE local chapter of the Bogleheads and Choose FI community where they teach common sense, personal finance, and investing. He's also the Nationals Debt Panel Contributor, an investment advisor to top management of banks, asset manager, managers, and sovereign wealth funds all over the world, including princes and prime ministers for over 17 years. He's a corporate wellness expert and the founder of DeadSimpleSaving.com. Help me welcome our guest who will talk about the unbiased guide to expat investing, Mr. Steve. Cronin, bro, how are you? Good evening. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, very good to be here. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, there's a sound effect for that, but I don't have a product team te production team. So here it is. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I need one of those forms because blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, you should have. I should get one of those one of these days. So, Steve, I know you're a very busy person. So, and uh, I give all the introductions already. And I just want to know who is who Steve was before becoming a passionate uh, advocate of FI or financial independence per se. Mm, yeah, interesting. I mean, uh, so once I was a school kid who didn't know anything about money and didn't know anything about financial independence because it's not taught at school. Mm -hmm. uh, once I was a psychology student at university, and uh, funny how, you know, Steve Jobs, he once said, like, if you look back on your life, like all these things, you, you see how the dots connect. He never realized that taking his calligraphy class at university would lead to him uh, introducing all these different fonts into the uh -huh. uh, Apple computer system. 
And so as a result, like we we got lots of fonts a lot earlier than if like Microsoft, if Microsoft had just taken over, then yeah. like we'd just be like stuck with one boring computer font, you know? So so all these things make a huge difference. And um and then um I was a management consultant, as as you said, like uh, I, I was helping countries to invest their hundreds of billions of dollars. Some of the principles are actually not that different to how you invest your hundreds or thousands of dollars. Um, mm -hmm. And you can, uh, both sovereign wealth funds and individual people can get sidetracked by exciting things or bad advice. So um, <laughs> it really took a, a, a near miss and a few mm -hmm. mistakes, financial mistakes to, to set me on the path of where I am today. So I, I like to say to people, I, I've made loads of financial mistakes in my life. And it's taken me years and years to figure out how to do, how to plan, save and invest properly. And so I'm really passionate. I would say my mission is to help people uh -huh. get it right first time. So they don't have to make the mistakes I made and they don't have to like spend like four years trying to figure out how to do it and just learn it in a couple of hours maybe. Wow, I, I can totally relate to what you're saying because I also made a lot of mistakes five years ago. And even uh, it, it is already a long time ago, it still haunts me. And that's the same thing that I told my clients and friends here that if you're going to fail, don't fail like me because it really took a lot of years before I got to recover from that mistake. And you, you mentioned about painful mistakes about your uh, uh, financial decisions. And I just want to know, Steve, what were those um, significant mistakes that you can remember right now that made you change the way you handle your finances? Yeah, sure. So I remember, um, I remember going to a bank. I, I had a bit too much in my current account. Like lots of people, they just let too much money build up in their current account, right? And I was going, I was going traveling, and I realized I didn't want to have too much in my current account. You know, what happens if someone stole my cards and emptied it? So I went to the bank, and I was like, "Hey, could I have a, a you know, I want a savings account, please?" They're like, "Oh, you should have this gold account, sir. It's very, very good." And it took me a month or two to realize that 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 interest rate on this account was. 0.1%. Now, these days, mm -hmm. we'd all be grateful for 0.1%, but this was back in like 2001. Shows how old I am, right? But uh, oh. <laughs> this, was, uh, this was back in 2001 when you could probably get like 4, 5, or 8%. So uh -huh. they were um, they were really uh, messing me around. And it made me realize, mm -hmm. hmm, maybe I can't trust financial institutions after all. Like maybe they don't have my best interests at heart. So that was a, mm -hmm. that was a useful mistake. Um, another useful mistake, um, I set up my own company in 2010 and uh, in places like the UAE, uh, some companies are just not very good at paying you on time. And um, <laughs> that, that, was, that was a difficult mistake because there were times when you, know, you start to have cash flow problems. Uh, I yeah. definitely remember at least one time where I, I didn't have enough money to mm -hmm. you know like for example in in the uae you you can't take out a bank note out of the atm that's smaller than 100 mm -hmm. dirhams right so so if you've yep. got 90 dirhams in your account you're not gonna give, you're not gonna be taking any money out so like i mean <laughs> i remember like literally not being able to take any money out to get a taxi home and having to transfer wow. like one pound over from the UK to uh, so that I could take a hundred dirhams. I mean, it's stupid, right? But that's what happens when you have cash flow problems. Um, I've I've had um, you know I've like had times when I didn't pay my credit cards off, and I'll mm -hmm. never make that mistake again for sure. So um, wow. and then I think the the closest I had, which was mm -hmm. what really transformed, is that I was talking to a financial advisor, and he he wasn't one of these young you know young chaps uh -huh. um he you know he looked the part he had gray hair he spoke very sensibly and he he was recommending that i put my money in this 25 year savings plan and it sounded Oof. you know like a good idea and 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 the longer you have it in the more bonuses mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. get and the lower the fees come and all this sort of stuff and i was telling my friend this as we we're driving along shakeside road and she said to me don't <laughs> do it like don't do it I what? lost lots of money in one of those funds. And I was like, wow, but what? Really? Why did why did I not notice this? And that mm -hmm. weekend I started to do some research because like look, I'm in the financial services business. I, I should be able yeah. to understand these things. 
And that opened up a whole world to me. I found Andrew Hallam, who mm -hmm. his website, obviously he's, he's an amazing uh, teacher yeah. for expats. And I started to realize that these plans were super bad. They have very high fee. Um, I discovered mm -hmm. just how many expats were getting ripped off really, really badly and losing mm -hmm. their hard-earned money. And, and I really vowed that day to take control of my own money and, and to help other people take control of their money as well. Um, and a bit of a long journey from there to now, but it really, that <laughs> moment where my friend vaccinated me against these plans by saying, don't do it. Like just literally a couple of days before I was going to uh -huh. sign on the dotted line. Okay. It, it, it underscored the importance of us spreading this message, which is why I'm so happy uh -huh. to be here with you and all the good stuff you're doing. Mm -hmm. But also mm -hmm. it, it made me realize how important it is to like take control of your money. And that is exactly from that moment you can trace to why I am here today. Damn, that, that, those experiences were really uh, painful to many expats who have encountered the same the same uh, the, the same plans and like what you were saying it's really amazing that there are there are programs that you think would be beneficial for you in the long run but when you when you uh put the numbers down then you will definitely see that hey it's not going to benefit you because of some things that you will also share with us this evening and shout out to and andrew way, as well my, um, <laughs> my friend who or my client who works in the philippines he's an expat okay. living in the philippines he mm -hmm. got stuck in some horrible plan as well so like there's plenty Ooh. of people in in the philippines who are trying to rip people off as well unfortunately right so it's not just uh, it's not just in the expat world yeah, so it's just not here. I mean, that's, I think that's how the financial world was designed. And when you, when you come from that place and then you realize that there are better options for retail investors or small-time investors to put their money in, then you, you should tell that to people because that would benefit a lot of their, uh, of their, of their money and also their lives in the future. And like what you said, Andrew was also a big help through his book, The Millionaire Expat. And it opened me to a lot of information that I wish I learned when I came to the UAE. And because of that, I also want to ask you, Steve, what currently is your investment discipline that you follow and who gives advice to Steve Cronin? Because you are <laughs> being followed by so many expats here. I listen to your podcast or you're, you're guesting to different podcasts. I read your debt panel because the stories that, you, that, that are being shared there are also the same stories that I share to Filipino expats here. I told them once that, hey, look at the, the current uh, article on the national and you'll learn how to prevent this from happening to you so who are your mentors and uh, what's your investment discipline right now <laughs> yeah i mean it, it's always everybody needs a mentor right it's always yeah. good to have uh, people people who can teach you stuff i like um i mean andrew hallam his articles are an amazing source of information mm -hmm. and people like uh ben carlson like a wealth of common sense or, or these mm -hmm. these all have like really good blogs really good videos um the other board members of simply fi are really good as well so you know it, it's a big facebook group now we've got mm -hmm. fifteen thousand people and so you can crowdsource a lot of sensible information and also experiences there about what people are struggling with yeah. uh, and people mm -hmm. come up with useful solutions all the time but i think that the board members are people that I really trust because uh -huh. I know that they're aligned, you know, that they're, they're all doing this for free as well. They don't mm -hmm. have any financial incentives. Um, and, and when you have those people who, who are really knowledgeable about expat finance and they, you trust each other, mm -hmm. that's a great source of information as well. So, so that's pretty much, and I think also once you, once you understand the basics and you understand mm -hmm. how to think about investing, uh -huh. or debt or financial independence or whatever it is, it does make it easier to Google things because then you can mm -hmm. filter out all the rubbish and you can find <laughs> the right information. And it's not always easy. I mean, I remember um, a couple of weeks ago, I had to write an article about uh, protection levels, like what happens if your brokerage mm -hmm. goes bust, right? And yeah. I had to do a huge amount of research um, across loads and loads of different web pages, but at least 
I, I have a clear sense now of what's right and what's wrong most of the time mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. Yeah, and shout out also for you guys bringing the Simply AFI community here. And that's how I got to know a lot of uh, different expats who are doing their best in helping other expats to invest on them uh, to invest independently. So c- can you tell us more about the Sim- the Simply AFI community? Because I want more Filipinos to be in that group as well. Yeah, sure. I mean, Simply AFI is really amazing. Um, it was founded by Sebastian in around 2016. Okay. And um, it started off as a kind of meeting meetup group, but what it's evolved mm-hmm. into really is a, a Facebook group. And uh, as I said, we have 15,000 members. If you look at the equivalent yeah. in the UK, like Financial Independence London, Financial Independence UK, they have like two, 3,000 members, right? We have five mm-hmm. times more than that. Why is it? I think it's because there's a real lack of information for expats. And there's mm-hmm. also a um, a real risk of getting ripped off, and lots of people have been ripped off. And so, once you have been ripped off, you are determined never to let that happen to you again, and never to let it happen to other people. And so, um, you would be more likely to join something like Simply FI and then tell all your friends about it. So, I think that's how we've grown. And the most important thing is that, like, none of us are on the Simply FI for mm-hmm. the money, right? We're not there to promote. Yeah. I'm not allowed to promote my online courses or my private coaching on mm-hmm. on that group no one's allowed to promote anything we don't allow affiliate links we don't allow mm-hmm. um, many advisors on there certainly not commission advisors <laughs> so it's like a safe space for asking questions around money and learning about finances mm-hmm. especially expat finances and you can really get any question answered like within about 10 minutes um i do sometimes True. wonder whether anyone does any work or they just sit there <laughs> waiting to ask questions Um, and it's been a, a really amazing thing. And I think that's why it's grown so much because it's sincere. You know, we really care about helping mm-hmm. people and, and people will feel that. And it's really nice. Yeah. yeah and uh, Simply AFI is like my safe place in terms of unbiased uh, investments for for expats. When, when I want to get advice on tips or, or tips about investing independently, that's where I usually go. And I met some uh, Filipinos there as well. And that is why I also want to bring in my, my clients there because I think I got lucky. I was in the industry and <laughs> I was that advisor who earns from commissions as well. But I went in that uh, group just to learn more about DIY investing because I also believe that um, it is better for everyone to have an idea of where to put their money and doing things by yourself can really give you so much uh, additional benefits in terms of costs and we are leading towards to that advice that you want to give us especially on your advi- unbiased tips on how to invest here in the UAE but before we go there let's just greet our viewers tonight we have Heidi who's, who's watching in the Philippines right now it's 11 p.m. in the Philippines and thank you so much for for watching this JR is also here. He's an expat here in uh, in Dubai. Also, Lawrence is here. Thank you, Lawrence, for watching. And um, Miss Mary Chris is also here. Thank you. She loves the background. Yeah, it looks like we have books on our background. <laughs> And uh, John Clyde is also here. Thank you so much, brother. And of course, Mr. Uh, Matthew Lamar is watching. And he said that great to see how, uh, how Steve is... Uh, wait, let me just check. Something popped up. Great to see how Steve is still so humble to take advices and make room to learn. Yes. And that's what I love about Steve. And also, I actually posted on Simply FI. I told her when I made the announcement that I was leaving the company and I was looking for advice from you guys. And I said there on the comment section, hey, uh, Steve is so busy. So I probably <laughs> seek your, your opinions, guys. And you actually took the time to leave a comment and we had a Zoom meeting after that and I learned so much from you and I really appreciate the time that you gave me. It's not just for tonight, but also the first time that I had my Zoom meeting with you. Yeah, it's really important. I think, as I said, I have a good sense of who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. Mm-hmm. And so if I see someone who's spreading the good word, I'm, I'm very happy to help them. Uh, and wow. yeah, I think it is also important for, you know, you can you can see jay and me and think oh these guys are so sorted they know exactly what they're talking about 
and they have enough money to make it happen. We all started from somewhere, right? And mm -hmm. we all started from a position of ignorance and we made lots of mistakes. So yeah, we're, we're still learning and um, it's just a, a, a compounding effect, a snowballing effect. The more yes. you learn, the more confident you get and the more you want to talk about it and and then you want to learn even more. So so yeah, absolutely. I and, and And I don't want you to think that I'm some superman who knows everything like absolutely <laughs> not like i'm i'm still learning and i'm still making mistakes and i'm definitely not perfect mm -hmm. when it comes to my finances um so yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> and uh really happy that you are a very humble person and always willing to learn from the other guys as well so before we go to our main topic this evening let's just have our first break and after that steve will share his unbiased uh, investment tips for expats here in the UAE. Well, actually, not just in the UAE, but also all across the world. So stay where you are. We'll just go for our first break. As city living turns more quickly, the need to always be in step with the daily rush has become ever more important. A need that developer Avida Land has chosen to take head-on with their newest development, Avida Towers Verge. Located in Mandaluyong City, Avida Towers Verge gives its residents unparalleled access to key places in the metro. It banners the ideas of access and convergence to make sure that its residents are never too far away from the things that count. Also worth noting is the fact that Mandaluyong is one of the best places at the moment to invest in property. With values continuing to rise due to high consumer demand, making Avida Towers Verge a very worthy investment. For almost three decades, Avida has been providing thoughtfully designed homes in secure communities. And with proximity becoming more and more essential in modern living, they have listened once again with the unmatched location and value proposition of Avida Towers Verge. So now, residents won't ever fear that they are missing out on anything again. And we're back. I'm still with Steve Conan, founder of Simply uh, Dead Simple And uh, we're here to talk about the unbiased guide to expat investing. So, Steve, would you please tell us more about your tips for us? Sure. I think it's really important to understand about financial independence. And it's it's important to understand how to think about money and how to tie everything together. Because there are so many people out there who spend a lot. You might have a credit card, you might have some cash in the bank, you might have mm -hmm. some debt, and you might have some investments. And you don't really think about why you have all those or how you fit them together. So I think I, I try to teach like an entire process that, mm -hmm. that I've put together just based on my experience of, of what works. <laughs> and And once you have that, you can see how everything plugs in. Okay. And then that really helps to reduce your stress because you're like, okay, I understand how money works now and understand mm -hmm. how it gets me from graduating college to having kids to retiring and, and beyond. Mm -hmm. And and when you can see that, you just don't stress about money so much because stressing about money is is a you know, major source of divorce, major source of unhappiness. It's going to have a physical toll on your health. And and it may finish you off, right? So, so um, <laughs> yeah. it's really important to get a, a grip on this. And mm -hmm. again, the basic concept, financial independence. The idea is that you may have some cash in the bank, right? And you do mm -hmm. need cash, right? You need cash to provide safety nets. But beyond that amount of cash that you need, we can talk about exactly how much you do need. Beyond that cash that you need, you then need to start investing because mm -hmm. you need to create assets that are going to provide you income, passive income that don't require much work from you at all. And all those different assets are going to be generating income from you that will allow you to retire. You don't necessarily have to have a state pension or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, and as most expats, frankly, we don't even have a pension at all, right? So you do need that. And whether that is an income stream from real estate or uh -huh. an income stream from stocks and bonds, and we can talk about how to create that, um, or mm -hmm. an income stream from businesses that you might buy, or an income stream mm -hmm. from pensions that you create or from the government pension. 
you then have to think about, well, what are those different income streams? You know, which ones do I feel most comfortable with? If you love real estate, which I don't, but hey, if you love real estate, <laughs> then yeah, you can have more of your income in retirement from real mm -hmm. estate. If you love stocks mm -hmm. and, and index investing and you find that the easiest thing, then do most from that. It's, it's all about creating a balance. But the main thing is understanding, well, how much do I want to live on in okay. retirement? And when I say retirement, I mean like when you're financially independent. Like you may be able to become financially independent when you're 40 or 45 or 50. In fact, I, I know at least uh, one Filipino who became financially independent like 40, 45. Right? It's entirely possible. Whoa. And, and um, so, you know, people think of retirement as sitting on your backside, going shopping, playing golf, lying on the beach, maybe smoking a cigar, like all this ridiculous Fantastic. stuff, right? But actually, or but being 60 and having gray hair and like being exhausted, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be like that. You being financially independent is just about having passive income that's greater than your living expenses. And it's just about mm -hmm. knowing that if you want to stop your job, you can do, right? You may love your job, mm -hmm. in which case there's no hurry, but it's nice to know that you can do it. So that one day, if you wake up and you're like, mm, I'm not enjoying this anymore, you can step away. Maybe you take a smaller, lower paid job, right? Maybe you're just passionate uh -huh. about art and you you just go and run your local art museum for a very small salary. Or mm -hmm. you're, you really, you know, you love helping children and you set up a charity to like build children's, more children's schools in the Philippines or whatever it might be. And you don't take any salary because all of your mm -hmm. living expenses are covered by your passive income. That is true freedom because it means you're not tied to any kind of corporate job. And obviously, like a lot of Filipinos, mm -hmm. they they go overseas. So many Filipinos, right, go overseas to become yeah. expats and, and work hard away from their friends, away from their family, sending back large chunks of money to support their family. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be amazing if you could make that money work, that the money that you are earning and are mm -hmm. able to keep making it grow and work super hard? You're working hard away from your friends and family. What if you could make your money work super hard in a sensible way, like not in a risky way, but in a sensible way uh -huh. so that at some point you don't have to be away from your friends and family. You can, if you want to go back to the Philippines, you can go back to the Philippines. If you want to go somewhere else, you can go somewhere else. You have total freedom mm -hmm. to do whatever you want to do. And you don't have to be a slave to money and a slave to working. What an amazing opportunity that is. And it's totally, totally doable. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think you designed a, a process based on your experience. And it, it's what you call the dead simple saving plan, or if it is a plan. So I want to share it. And Get, uh, can you give us a quick rundown on uh, how to execute this? Yeah. So the, the basic so. <laughs> the basic idea is you've got a plan, you've got to save, and you've got to invest. Uh, but really, okay. obviously, the, the devil is in the details. So let, let's talk about planning. The first uh -huh. thing is money is money is psychological, right? It, it's like uh -huh. health. It's like relationships. Your attitudes to money are shaped by your parents, by your siblings, by your friends, even by your boss. By your culture mm -hmm. and and you have to step back from all of that and say like are my beliefs about money actually helping me and you have mm -hmm. to start thinking well like am i am i comfortable to invest in real estate am i comfortable to invest in stocks and bonds am i good with money if you're like one of these people who's like i'm not good with money i'm just gonna um let my husband or my wife or my banker or my advisor deal with it you may get a nasty shock when you discover they're not as good at dealing with your money as you thought they were right <laughs> so you have to build yeah. up your mindset to say like actually i can be good with money and i'm going to manage this myself and uh, i'm going to take control the next thing you have to understand is it's very similar to losing weight right what do you do you step yeah. the first thing when you want to lose weight is you step on the scales mm -hmm. and you say okay how much do i weigh in kilograms and then you say okay how much do i want to lose now okay i want to lose five kg or 10 kg well, now you have a target and you're much more likely to reach that target once you set a target, right? Because you're more mm -hmm. motivated and you can track your progress towards it. So it's exactly the same thing. You have to understand what your current finances are. And this is the mm -hmm. step where everybody like tends to grind to a halt. 
right? They tend to just because like tracking your credit card statement or like your expenditures or whatever, it's really boring, but it's, it's super important. <laughs> yeah. So you have to understand like two key things, right? First thing is your, what's your net worth? Like if you, uh -huh. if you as like J Inc were to be like sold, <laughs> right? What yeah. would, what would your worth be? Like, what would you sell it for? Right. Now, any mm -hmm. company out there, any decent company, they understand what their balance sheet is and they understand what their profit and loss is. Well, what's your balance sheet? What's your profit and loss? Right. So, so yeah. your balance sheet is your net worth. It's your assets, what you own minus your liabilities, what you own. Uh, oh, what you owe to other people. So it might be, you know, like all your cash, all your stocks, all your real estate, land, um, any anything you, you own. Subtract from that anything that you owe to other people, credit card balance, a mortgage, mm -hmm. a student loan, personal loan, things like that. Once you subtract all those liabilities, what's left? It might be not very much. Hopefully it's not negative. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. your, net, your net worth is not your self-worth. So it doesn't matter what, what yeah, happens. Exactly. It's just important that you know that number because once you know it and you track it, you can grow it and you'll grow it much faster than you realize. Next thing is to understand your, your savings rate. What's uh -huh. your income, money coming in, minus um, your expenses? What's, your, what, what's left over from your income as a percentage of your total income right? when your expenses have gone out? So at the end of mm -hmm. the month, when hopefully there's some money left in your bank account, how big is that as a percentage of your total income? And and ideally, you know, it's not like 3%. And I always say, mm -hmm. I mean, in the UAE, it's easy, right? Because there's no tax. And so yes. I always say like 50%, right? If you can get it to 50%, you are going to transform your life. But I understand wow. kids are expensive. Like Filipinos have True. to send a lot of money home. I understand <laughs> that, right? But if you can, if you can just get from 10% to 11%, mm -hmm to 15%, mm -hmm. to 20%, every single percentage point will transform how you, um, it will transform the stability of your life, right? So so it's yeah. really important to like, you've got two levers there to change your set, your mm -hmm. savings rate. You've got your income and you've got your expenses. Uh -huh. So you can try and expenses. get a pay rise. You can look for new jobs. You can try and uh, mm -hmm. get an extra job. You can, you can try and get promoted. That boosts your, you can do side hustles at the weekend. This mm -hmm. is your, your income. You can also reduce the expenses, like the big expensive stuff, like rent, education, things like that. But also the little stuff mm -hmm. that tends to stack up, like food deliveries and things like that. True. So, the little things. So, so, <laughs> so you have to boost your, your savings rate. And how you figure out, well, um, and then the next thing is you have to have a goal, right? So number three is you mm -hmm. have to have a target. And, and this is what goes back to what we were saying, like, how much do you want to live on in retirement? If you feel, okay, I could retire on a thousand dollars a month or two thousand dollars a month, just think in today's money. Right? So maybe you need twelve thousand dollars a month, maybe a year, maybe you need twenty-four thousand dollars a year, whatever it is, right? Is some of that going to come from rental income? Is some of that going to come from mm. stocks and bonds? Um, if it if it's just coming from rental income. You need to find property that's going to generate twenty four thousand a year, right? If mm -hmm. it's going to come from stocks and bonds, well, using the four percent rule, which Jay can tell you about another time, <laughs> you can take four percent <laughs> yeah. out of that stock and bond portfolio, right? So if you if you need twenty five thousand uh, a year, then mm -hmm. um, you can get by on like. Two hundred and fifty thousand, uh, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You know, portfolio like that. So, um, is that right? I want to get my numbers right. Yeah. So, if you want, <laughs> if you wanted to live on twenty, twenty thousand dollars a year, then if you had Let's a portfolio of, of a quarter of a million dollars, two hundred fifty thousand dollars, then that would that would generate that, and you would be able to take out that money. Yes, five hundred. Um, no problem, right? So, so. The key thing is like once you know that goal, you can say, well, how far away am I from that goal based on mm -hmm. how long I want to how much longer I want to work? And if you if you don't, if you're way off, right? And it says, Oh, you can retire in 30 years, and you're like, what? I want to retire in 10 years, not 30 years, then you need to reduce your happiness with okay. intention, right? Know why you're mm -hmm. doing it, reduce your happiness and say, Okay, I'm going to reduce 
I'm going to reduce my expenses. I'm going to work mm -hmm. really hard. I'm going to get the whole family on board. And mm -hmm. we're going to do this, even though our happiness is going to go down, our monthly savings rate is going to go up, our net worth is going to go up, and yep. um, the time to retirement or financial independence is going to be much shorter, and we're going to get ourselves back on track. And if you do that with clear intention, if you have a plan, it will get you through those difficult days, especially, and this is especially true if you're out of, if you're in debt, right? If mm, you have to pay yeah. your credit card, and in a way, this this takes us to the next bit that the saving, right, um, is that I, I sit on the national newspaper's debt panel, as you know, like every week we mm -hmm. have to find a different way to say the same thing. People say, I've got lots of credit card <laughs> debt and personal loan. I just lost my job and I can't pay it off. Where it's like, well, you, you were putting yourself in this massively vulnerable position by mm -hmm, loading mm -hmm. up on credit card debt and not paying it off every month by loading up on personal True. loans having a good life, but you didn't realize that like, if you lose your job or you get a 50% pay cut, which lots of people have, you're an incredibly dangerous position, right? Incredibly exactly. dangerous. You could end up in jail if you're not careful, right? So, yeah, true. so you, you, you do need to manage this. So what do you do? Well, um, again, you have to start thinking like boost your income, reduce your expenses, mm -hmm. um, track your cash flow. I think this is really important as well, actually, for yeah. people who are in debt, I, I I don't care about cheap debt, right? So for me, anything that's below 4% a year is cheap, mm -hmm. right? So okay. you can, yeah, carry on making your monthly payments towards your mortgage or whatever. But um, you can, you know, if you have any extra income coming from your salary or you inherit a big lump sum or whatever, mm -hmm. you can just invest that money, right? Because you'll make more than, four, comfortably make more than 4%. But mm -hmm. if, you're, if your debt is expensive, it's like 5%, 7% or credit card debt, like 40% or 45%, right? It may say like 3% a year. That's like 40%, 3% a month is like 40% a year because of compounding, like interest on interest, like building up and up. So, so credit card, that's super important. It's super toxic. You must pay it off every single month. So important. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of expats are are tied up with that cycle of uh, paying their debts every end of the month and then just living paycheck to paycheck. And uh, the two things that you mentioned here about planning and saving are really the basic foundation before you invest. And as I'm looking at your uh, as I'm looking at your diagram, it's very similar to what I'm also promoting. That before you start investing, you gotta make sure that your you know where your where your starting point is, like your net worth your savings rate, and especially the mindset. And in addition to the mindset would be the clear purpose of why you want to be financially independent. So having those preparation can help you become a better investor uh, in the next coming years or what. Because I think the, the main problem or one of the problems of many Filipinos is that when it comes to investing, they go ahead and uh, make rush decisions even if they, if they check their numbers. And they're not fully prepared on this. So it's, it's a good point that you mentioned that uh, these two things, planning and saving, are the two important things before any expat should start investing. Now, let's jump ahead with the investment. And uh, I'll share another screen. And I would love for you to um, inform our audience about, I think this is the ETFs that uh, the FI community is promoting. And let me just check that out. Okay, so I'll, I'll share the screen again. There it is. There we go. So yeah, look, before you <laughs> even think about investing, you have yeah. to pay off any expensive debt, like over 5% mm -hmm. a year. You've got to pay it off. You must have a cash buffer, at least six months total, total expenses. If you've got a mortgage back home, and a tenant is paying that off. Well, you could lose your job and the tenant could lose their job at the same time, right? So include True. that in your expenses, even if you've got tenants paying it off. Total expenses, cash buffer. Then you've got to think about like what's coming up over the horizon, the next two to five years. Are you going to buy a house? A house? Are you going to buy a car? Mm -hmm. Are you getting are you getting married? Uh, mm -hmm. Are you going to do an MBA? Do you have to pay for your kid's education? This sort of money you cannot put in the stock market because the stock market is very predictable over 10 to 30 years. It's very unpredictable over 
two to five years. So anything like coming up on the horizon, you've got to start saving cash for that. Once you've got the cash exactly. there, those cash safety nets, that's when you can start to do this, what Jay's showing here. That's when you can start mm -hmm. to think about investing. Now, the problem exactly. for expats and possibly Filipinos as well, right? So like people in uh -huh. the US, UK, Canada, they have it easy because there's lots of very big companies that make it super easy for you to invest. Mm -hmm. In the Philippines, I think it's pretty easy to invest in the local stock market, True. but the fees yeah. are going to be expensive. Um, mm -hmm. In When you're an expat, it's not easy to do anything, frankly, mm -hmm. and anything that people do put you in is very expensive and it's probably the wrong thing and they're probably just doing it because they're trying to make commission out of you. So yeah. this, this process diagram here, this is the simple way to invest and no one's going to show you how to do this because they just want to make money out of you, right? But I'm going to show Ooh. you how to do this because <laughs> I'm not trying to, I, I don't sell any financial products. Yeah. I want you to manage your money. So this is the, this is the problem, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's say you want to buy five bananas and okay. you go to Chiquita and you say, <laughs> hey, Chiquita, uh, I'd like five bananas, please. They'll be like, what are you talking about, man? Like, maybe we can sell you five <laughs> pallets of bananas, right? Like 50,000 bananas. We're not going to sell you five bananas. Mm -hmm. And and so what do you have to do? You have to go to a supermarket. Uh -huh. And if you say, I'd like to buy five bananas, they're like, yeah, no problem. Okay, here's five bananas. Because the whole business model is set up to help you do that. Uh -huh. So you have the same problem with investing is that if you go to one of these gigantic fund management companies like Vanguard mm -hmm. or iShares or even Fidelity and you say, hey, I'd buy you know a couple of uh, shares or I'd like to put uh, $400 into, um, into one of your funds. They're just gonna be saying, like, no, go away. You're an expat. Like we don't have, we've only just got <laughs> set up in the UK. Like we certainly don't have time to deal with people in the UAE. So whether you're an Emirati or you're a Brit or you're a Filipino yeah. in in the UAE, it, it's very difficult to invest. So how do you do it? You have to go to a fund supermarket, mm -hmm. right? You have to go to a fund supermarket, and that supermarket, and then you can buy these small amounts, and that is an offshore brokerage an international brokerage, yeah. brokerage now um what you then have to do is that you then have to get your money from your bank to mm -hmm. your brokerage and sometimes the banks they like to rip you off on the exchange <laughs> rate right? so yeah. always be careful about the exchange rate uh, if you're converting dirhams into into pesos or, or you're converting dirhams into into dollars like whatever it dollars, might be yeah. be really careful about exchange rates um now mm -hmm. there is a difference depending on how much you earn and how much you mm -hmm. can invest actually because um if you are able to invest a thousand dollars two three four five thousand dollars let's say every quarter every month or every quarter it's mm -hmm. easy to use interactive brokers they're based in the us they're okay. super cheap right? Super okay. cheap if you're investing that amount. But if you can't invest that, and, and there are many Filipinos in, in the UAE yeah. who could maybe invest, uh, well, you tell me, maybe like uh, $100, $100 mm -hmm. a month. Would that be fair? Yeah, th that'll be fair. Yeah. Yeah. So $100 a month, Interactive Brokers is just going to end up being too expensive for you because they charge $10 mm -hmm. a month as a platform yeah. fee, that's 10%, right? You're only going to mm -hmm. make 7% long-term in the stock market every year. So you can't be paying 10% and then get back 7%. <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't make sense. That's crazy. However, there are some companies that have mm -hmm. appeared in the UAE, these robo-advisors, sure. literally like robotic advisors, right? Mm -hmm. Who are set up and they're now accepting smaller amounts, so mm -hmm. nothing's ever going to be perfect, but these robo advisors are a pretty good way for you if you only make if you can only afford to invest a hundred dollars a month mm -hmm. or lower. I think they they accept fifty dirhams in every transaction. Yeah, they, they would allow Wait, it. Second, fifty dirhams is uh I I, wow. I have yeah I mean it's it's very affordable for many expatriates. And, yeah, that's uh, fantastic. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna change 
the ball game in terms of savings plans and all that stuff. Now, I'm very curious, Steve, why is ETF or exchange traded funds the mainly used uh, investment vehicle by the FI community and also the robo advisory services? What's with ETF yeah. and why ETF? Yes. Yeah, so, so really, like this is what took me four years to figure out right? because I knew... <laughs> I knew that passive index investing, right, where you just invest uh -huh. in the index, you don't pay someone to like look in their crystal ball and try and figure out which stocks uh -huh. to buy or any of that rubbish. You just invest in the index and ideally <laughs> invest in like a global index, like by the world. Like uh -huh. if I'm, I'm from the UK. There's no sense in me just investing in UK stocks. It doesn't make any sense. I'm so overexposed to the UK economy anyway. Same if you're a Filipino, mm -hmm. right? Um, when you're in the Philippines, like everybody's trying to put you into the Filipino stock market, it doesn't make sense. You are so overexposed to the Filipino economy mm. anyway in ways you didn't even realize. The currency, property, your parents, getting a job there, all sorts of stuff. So, so you need to diversify globally. Uh -huh. That way, if something happens to the Philippines economy, doesn't matter because you're diversified <laughs> globally. So this is Ooh. really powerful. Now, um, Traditionally, you could invest in a mutual fund, right? And in, in a mm -hmm. fund, this is the typical way of doing it. But expats do not have access to these funds for whatever reason. It's it's too complicated to put put us in it. I don't know what it is, but we cannot. So we mm -hmm. just have to mm -hmm. forget about those. But there's another type of fund called an ETF, which is an exchange traded fund. Might as well call it expat total freedom because it's so amazing <laughs> for expats. I love that right? ETF. So these exchange traded funds, they are bought and sold on stock exchanges like a stock. So if you want to mm -hmm. buy an Apple stock, you go to the, or a Tesla stock, mm -hmm. you go to the stock exchange, you click buy in a millisecond, you can buy mm -hmm. one share of that stock, right? Mm -hmm. Same with these exchange traded funds. In a millisecond, you can click buy and you can buy one of these funds. This is how you get access to Vanguard and iShares. But the price of that, particular stock is driven by thousands of stocks inside that right so it's like a little wrapper mm -hmm. that that wraps it up in like a little stock like wrapper but inside the price of that is driven by thousands of other stocks and this is how at the nice. click of a button you can get access to the whole world like 3500 wow. stocks in an ETF that's global diversification and it's super powerful wow. and it's super quick. This is how you can invest in like five minutes a month or even better. If you use one of these robo-advisors, yeah, you're going to have to uh -huh. pay a little bit more than doing it for yourself, but they will put it in the funds for you. So you mm -hmm. agree with them. What's your risk appetite? How much, yeah. um, how much risk do you want to take? What are your goals? And then you just send them the money and they do everything for you. So it's completely brainless. You don't even have to think about it. And that's pretty powerful. Wow. ETFs is like, just like buying mutual, fu mutual funds and trading it like a stock. And I've been studying about it uh, for the last couple of months now, especially after I read Andrew Hallam's book. And it's really an eye opener to me. And uh, now that there's also some raw advisors who's giving you exposure to these ETFs, then it's really a great opportunity for uh, for retail investors to get exposed globally by just doing it like what you said five minutes a day now i think, I think just on that, like I, these, yeah. these three three words that will okay. transform your financial literacy right so robo advisor right <laughs> okay etf and mm -hmm. brokerage once you understand those mm. three words then the key to low cost investing for expats, it unlocks the gates, right? And you can just mm -hmm. walk right in and you can transform yours and your family's wealth. So I think wow. those, exactly, those three words. Again, we're not taught this at school. When you get off the plane <laughs> in Dubai, there's not a big sign saying, hey, this is what you need to do <laughs> to make money. In fact, it's the opposite, right? You get a phone call from someone persuading you to get in one of these horrible funds. But if mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. these three words, and if you know that you need to keep fees low, ideally try and keep your total fees below 1%. Why is that? Because like okay. you're only going to make 7% in the stock market, right? So yes. So even 1%, which sounds pretty low, 1% out of 7% is 
is like 12% of your total annual profit, right? So you have to keep fees low. If you try and keep your total fees below 1%, it will protect you against so many scammy advisors um, and so many bad plans. Um, so so yeah. the, the brokerage and the ETFs and the robo-advisors, this is the way to keep those fees low and get your money working hard for you. True. And can I share just one more slide from your presentation that I downloaded? And I think it sure. will really give a lot of value in this session of ours. The yeah, impact yeah, yeah. of a 4% fee if the average return of a fund is 7%. So you see, there's 78% reduced in gains. That's the impact of fees. And this is why... Yeah, so, so I, is, I mean, yeah. even if we've got time, if you can go a slide back, mm -hmm. there's another important... This yeah, this one. This is a super powerful slide. I borrowed it from my friend Sebastian, actually. Yeah. Um, so he, he developed this. But like this is this is based on someone investing less than a thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. But if you just wow. knock off a zero, then then it can be like less than a hundred dollars a month, and it still applies, mm -hmm. right? So then maybe it applies to to more Filipinos in the UAE, right? So. Mm -hmm. Let's say that, that this person, you see the blue lines at the bottom, right? Yeah, this yeah, person true. is investing yeah, yeah. 100, about $100 every month, okay? So that's about a thousand dollars a year for 40 years. Mm -hmm. And so after 40 years, they have $40,000. I'm knocking a zero off for you live, right? Um, so they have <laughs> saved up $40,000. Okay. That's okay. Wow. But their, their, their money's not working that hard for them because they, that, that's the money that they've got from their salary from working hard, but uh -huh. they have been investing it smartly. They've made that 7% a year and they're getting that compounding. So you get the 7% in the first year, the second year uh -huh. you get 7% on what you put in originally, but also the 7% that you made throughout the year. So you're getting 7% on top of 7% on top of 7%. That's why it goes up like a coronavirus curve, right? It's like, <laughs> uh, and this is super powerful. So look what happens after 10 years. You can see the, the orange bit, right? You can see that like mm -hmm. you've got your portfolio size now is like two thirds money from your salary. And then a third uh -huh. is just like free money that, that's just True. come from working hard while you're, you're, you asleep. You're asleep mm -hmm. and your money's working hard for you. After 20 years, half of your portfolio is free money right that just came from you investing sensibly and then after 40 years you've turned that 40,000 into 210,000 210,000 right and that's when you can take out nearly 20,000 a year like 15 mm -hmm. to 20,000 a year to live on for the rest of your life it's super powerful right and this is because the power of compounding. Now, if we go to the next yeah. slide, the point is like the power of compounding over 40 years, your portfolio is five times more than five times bigger than it would have been otherwise. The problem with investing in these savings plans that have a high commission or in um, actively managed funds back in the Philippines, mm -hmm. they have high fees, right? And every yeah. percentage point is knocking off a slice of those gains yeah. like, and a big slice, right? Ten, we're talking tens of thousands here, right? Some are some so, are five percent management fees in the yeah. Pool. I mean, it's insane, right? So if you think like four yeah. percent, again, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's four percent every year to set against the seven percent profit you're making every year. Four percent out of seven percent is sixty percent. You're losing sixty percent of your gains every single year you're handing those to your banker or your financial advisor or your insurance company, right? If you're doing whole life insurance. So then what happens is instead of having that nice, amazing curve, you can see that like, the curve is a lot flatter. Yeah. And instead of having, you take your, your 40,000 that you invested over 40 years, you only turn it into 65,000 instead of 210,000. And therefore, you have handed a hundred and fifty thousand dollars, a hundred and fifty thousand dollars over those forty years to your advisor. Think how that's going to yeah. just like massively change your your retirement for the worse. Yeah.
That so that's lot. why if you can keep fees low and learn how to do this yourself, you will and save, you know, closer to 50% of your income or anything towards that. This will really transform your finances. Yeah. And uh, these fees are the ones that are crippling your gains. So it's very important that all of us should be aware of those numbers, because if not, then it's going to hunt our future definitely so steve there's just one question here from one of our guests uh what's your take with expats taking a loan here in the uae and investing it in the philippines since the rate here is way lower sorry yeah interesting i think you have to think about the rate might be lower but you also have to think about currency depreciation now i don't i don't know is there currency depreciation in the philippines well, uh, right now, I think there is, but just because one, because yeah. what happens is that then um, that's why the interest. If you've got higher inflation and you've got currency mm -hmm. depreciation, you end up with higher interest rates in the Philippines. And what will happen is that you might get a property in the Philippines, but that the value of that property is going down. Maybe not in terms of uh, your currency. But in terms of the dollar, right, US mm -hmm. dollar, the value is going down. So if you're going to get a, a loan in the UAE, you have to make really sure that the value in US dollars of your property or whatever you're doing in the Philippines, right, is going to be stable. Otherwise, you're going to have big, 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 big problems. The other thing is that you better not lose your job, right? But if, if you're loading up in debt <laughs> yeah. in, in the UAE, you're not going to be able to leave the country very easily. Like they're getting better at chasing you across borders these days. Um, mm -hmm. You could end up in a situation where you lose your job, you've got a big mortgage, your account gets frozen, you don't have any money, and then you have to like slink off to the Philippines um, with your tail between your legs and um, everything's just really bad. And you can't support your family in the Philippines anymore because you've like you built up so much debt. Exactly. And then the debt collectors yeah. come over to the Philippines and um, they make your life miserable and your family's life miserable. So I would say it's a possibility, but you mm -hmm. must have that cash buffer, right? That six months cash buffer. Then you must make sure that loan is pretty reasonable interest rate not above uh -huh. four or five percent and you must make sure that whatever you invest in it's not going to depreciate against the us dollar okay well thank you for your i'm tips, liking these brother. live questions though that's always fun <laughs> yeah. um, this is yeah. fun i mean doing it on Streamyard. we should do this on simply fi as well now probably so one last question for your one uh, last two questions very very quick because many filipinos are so into active stock trading Forex and cryptocurrencies. So what's your take on these investment vehicles? Or okay. if it's an investment. Any kind of trading <laughs> is a total waste of time, right? Because what's mm. going to happen is, yeah, you'll do six good trades and you'll think you're a genius. And then the seventh trade will wipe <laughs> out all your gains. Or you'll have six good months. And then the seventh month will wipe out all your gains for those six months. Or you'll have six good years and you think you're a super genius and in the seventh year there'll be a big crash you'll lose all the gains from your six years and you're going to have to sell your house right because you built your lifestyle on all this wealth that isn't solid so so be careful about that so stock trading not a good it's okay for a bit of fun money right like 10 yeah, of your money. investment portfolio like your retirement portfolio not even in your retirement portfolio on top of that uh -huh. if your retirement portfolio is ten thousand dollars then maybe, yeah, you can have an extra $1,000 for crypto, for buying stocks, mm -hmm. for um, investing in your friend's businesses, stuff like that, like stuff that can like really easily go down close to zero, that can go down 90%. Investing in individual stocks is super risky. Um, mm -hmm. Crypto, it's gone really high in 2020. So everyone thinks this is amazing. It could easily reverse, just like it did in like 2017, 2018. It easily reversed. You can lose big time, like big time. So again, it's fun money only. If you have no retirement portfolio, right? If you're just like, if you're a sheep who's just persuaded 
by whatever else everyone is telling you to do, but whatever's hot, uh -huh. right? So <laughs> you just have some money, maybe you have a credit card, and then someone's like, oh, you know, um, Bitcoin's gone up like 20 times, and you're like, wow, I could turn, you know, $1,000 into $20,000, that'd be amazing, and you put all your life savings into Bitcoin, it could be a disaster. It could be a disaster. I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. Maybe it'd be amazing, but it, <laughs> yeah. there is, it's very risky. So there's a decent probability that that individual stock or that individual cryptocurrency could be a disaster for you. And then mm -hmm. you've let down not only yourself, you've let down your entire family. Probably yeah, true. you were like telling yeah. everybody else about it. You probably let down all your friends and colleagues as well. Because you know what? People only talk about their trading <laughs> when they're doing well. They don't talk about yes. it, not even to their wife or husband, right? They don't talk <laughs> about it when it does badly. So you're only hearing one way. You're only hearing one side of the conversation. And why is everybody writing newspaper articles about crypto and individual stocks and NFTs and all this rubbish? It's NFTs, because people yeah. click on it and they read it, right? And so mm -hmm. passive index investing which is the best, most sensible way to invest in the long term, no one writes about it because it's essentially boring, right? Boring. But you want boring. <laughs> Promise me, yeah. have excitement. If you want excitement, go, go on a roller coaster or go and have <laughs> go to a bar with your friends, right? Don't, yeah. don't like have excitement in your investing. Or if you do just like a tiny bit of your portfolio, because otherwise like, you know, your finances should not be exciting. They should just not okay. be exciting, right? Because th th they're going to get scary, right? The roller coaster is going to be like, and then you're going to want True. to get off and you won't be able to. Hey, I I'm going to borrow what you said. If you want thrill and excitement in your life, don't do that in your finances. Go and ride a roller coaster instead. I love that. I love that. Now, see, Steve, since my program is all about pur purpose-driven finance, I always ask these questions to my guests. How do you want to be remembered in terms of how you use your money? Um, I want to be remembered that I made my money work hard mm -hmm. so that I could have financial freedom, which meant I could spend more time with my family. I could teach them how to be free. And then I could go and have impact in the world. My mission is my mission for the next five years or so is to go and help expats in particular but as many people as possible to learn how to plan save and invest by themselves so they be can become financially independent then they can go and hack in the world the world in 2021 it needs people with good intentions and if you're going to turn those good intentions into impact then you need time energy and money if you are missing mm. any of those three you are not going to have the sort of impact that you could have so have a think about that and then go and make sure that you do have time, energy, and money. One of the best ways to do that is to get your money working hard for you so you don't have to work so hard for your money. Time, energy, and money. Thank you so much, Steve, for, for those words. And if they want to if they wanna reach out to you, where can they find you? I think you have a website. Again, it's this one, is it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can go to deadsimplesaving.com. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm starting the XFI podcast soon. That's, wow. um, that's expat financial independence. It's going to be all about expats. I also run, if you're on clubhouse, if you've got an iPhone and you're on clubhouse, which mm -hmm. is clubhouse is amazing. Um, yeah. then we have the financial independence club on clubhouse. Uh, we do rooms at least once a week. Hopefully we're going to do many more. You can follow the financial independence club. You can follow me on there. And um, yeah, that's uh, that's how you can reach me. But all my there's lots of free stuff, lots of free information on deadsimplesaving.com. Then I have like online courses and and coaching sessions for people who who want to accelerate their progress. Perfect. And then also flash your number here, okay? So you guys can text Steve. I haven't tried calling Steve yet, so it's the first time I flashed his number here. And I think we have a community where we want them to join us as well. It's the Simply FI community on Facebook. Yeah, exactly. So um, join the Simply FI community, yeah. All right. So that wraps our episode for tonight. And I hope you gained a lot of wisdom from Steve. And this episode helps you begin your journey towards low-cost investing and start or prevent yourself from 
joining some of the savings programs out there, which will definitely eat a lot of your gains. And if you missed this entire episode, you can listen to this on my Parent Purpose podcast through Spotify, Anchor, and Apple Podcast. And don't forget to follow Purpose Driven Finance on Facebook, IG, and LinkedIn. And don't forget to visit deadsimplesaving.com by Steve Cronin. Again, this is KJ together with Steve Cronin telling you to prosper with a purpose. Thank you so much, Steve. Really appreciate the time you've given me. Really appreciate it, brother. Take care. Thank you very much.